Hi, my name is Gary Mitchell. I'm a GP in Dunedin. So I've been using point of care ultrasound for about 25 years. And initially, my interest was in using it when I was working in um, rural places, middle of nowhere, like in um, time in Africa, working on as a ship's doctor in sub sub Antarctic voyages, remote islands, I like to work. And now I find it's kind of a mainstream thing that I, that I use when I'm working in downtown general practices like uh, I do in Dunedin these days. So when I think of going to a remote place uh, like where I am now, this you might recognize this is Pitkin Island. When I think of coming here, what am I going to take? Um, supplies, kind of equipment, uh, point of care ultrasound right at the very top of the list. You know, kind of leave the stethoscope behind your ultrasound is your new stethoscope and gives you so many options with handheld op uh, ultrasound being so uh, easy to use these days you know all your presets they're available on your scan and um, your lead in time to learning how to do ultrasound is so much shorter than the old days uh, it's kind of just normal i think every practice should have an ultrasound scan. You know, you, the woman comes in uh, with a um, bleeding in early pregnancy. You just want to show her the heartbeat. So you just need to, you know, pop your scan on, put your preset for your early pregnancy or early obstetric, and it uh, saves you a whole lot of hassle sending her to the hospital, early pregnancy services, all that sort of thing. Uh, we're trying to keep people out of secondary care. And these these scans are things that don't take up any time uh, compared to just a normal examination. They actually save you time, save you writing a referral. You know, when I have a look at a bladder, you know, is the um, is the is this person in retention or is this person just you know uh, having a, an overactive bladder, struggling to pee? It's just a let's have a look. But it's in the realm of musculoskeletal ultrasound that uh, things are really exciting. And I actually think this is the first skill that we should learn as GPs, how to scan bones. If you've never seen a scan of a bone, you look at this picture, you think, oh, there's a fracture. It's kind of intuitive, it's kind of straightforward, especially long bones looking for cracks in the shaft or buckles in the distal aspects. And Musculoskeletal ultrasound is your go-to kind of first up learning. So ultrasound gives us an extra tool. Remember in the old days, you know, as GPs, we, you know, we delivered babies, we did anaesthetics, sometimes we did a surgical list every week. These things have all been taken away from us. Now we have the chance to reclaim something because we can, we have the advantage of the patient in front of us, the clinical knowledge of this specific person and the radiological picture in front of us that we can uh, look at. We can put the scan right where it hurts, we can compare with the other side. So this is a scan of a distal radius, and I'll just put the marker on. And there's the growth plate there, so the child. And this child came to see me uh, having uh, fallen in a playground. Uh, we were an hour and a half from the nearest centre, the nearest x-ray, uh, the nearest sort of clogged secondary care service. Put the scan on, there's the, there's the sort of disruption to the cortex. You see a little buckle fracture there at the end of the radius. It's on a dorsal view. So we were able to manage this um, without sending into, we just put a splint on and uh, the child got better over a few weeks, as you'd expect. So these are occasional presentations in your downtown general practice, and, and these are things uh, like these buckle fractures. You see this buckle fracture of this bone here. Uh, so you've got your skin, your subcutaneous tissue. There's a tendon running over the over the growth plate and over into the wrist joint there. There's the buckle at the distal end of the radius. You get these presentations in general practice, you'll send them down for an x-ray or to the urgent care or you know, to the hospital. But these are things that uh, can be managed and future these will be managed uh, once we're all up and running with musculoskeletal ultrasound. Buckle fractures are one of the uh, satisfying things that we can actually just deal with these in, in primary care. 
uh, slap a splint on of some kind. It doesn't really matter what you do with these buckles. They're stable, small buckle fractures, and they heal regardless. Wrap a magazine around and strap it with sellotape if you're in the middle of nowhere. So these are satisfying things to treat, and these are kind of bread and butter kind of musculoskeletal issues. So musculoskeletal ultrasound, um, point of care ultrasound is great for ruling out fractures. So oftentimes uh, somebody comes in, they've hurt their their wrist or their arm, uh, whatever, their limb, you, give, you scan them in the bone, you can see the bony cortex. You look along the line of the cortex, as you can see my marker, just that's what like a normal bone looks like there. You remember you've got your skin, your, there's some muscle there, some more tissue, this, the bone, and you can see, you know, you can obviously see a disruption there, but that, that's what it should look like, nice and smooth. And then your growth plate there, and then your joint down the end there. So if you see a nice smooth bone, you can say to that person, look, you don't have a fracture, and you can save this person all that sort of secondary care, uh, hassle and weight, and just, uh, you know, put them in a little splint or, uh, or a tubey grip. And there's a big, there's a big advantage, say so ruling out fractures, ruling in something like this one. Um, if I see something a little bit more dramatic like this, I'm thinking well, maybe that's more than a buckle. There might be a Salter Harris too. And remember, you can't see into bones on a scan. Just see the surface of bones. So you see the um, the angulation there. You can sometimes see a bit of displacement. Uh, that. If I saw that on a scan, I would send that in, uh, get an X-ray, and sort of document it, uh, the configuration of it. It's more than just a simple buckle fracture. So we should remind ourselves too. I mean, you know, we're putting needles into things uh, all the time. We're using anatomical landmarks. We're injecting shoulders. We're aspirating knees. Nowadays, you really should be doing these under a scan, or think about doing these under a scan. More accurate. Uh, lots of studies showing that you want to do something a little bit more sophisticated. You want to inject a tenosynovitis at the wrist or something. You, know, you can have a look at the space where the swelling is, follow your needle in. Uh, this is really fun stuff to do. And this is something that we, we can do in general. We don't need to refer these things to you know, uh, ultrasound facilities where people might wait for several weeks to get it done. Just get it done. Here's another bone. Here's the um, fifth metacarpal as it comes down towards the neck. And you can see a disruption at the neck there and a bit of angulation. You can see the fracture. You can see the amount of angulation. It's actually easier to measure than it is on an X-ray where you have a, bu a bunch of bones getting in the way of your lateral and trying to measure that angle. So with these minor neck of fifths, you can just scan them. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily need to adjust that one because it's not much of an angle, but you can adjust it and then put the scan back on. Uh, you know, give it a little push, uh, get the person to harden up, or or put in a, a regional block. You can block the ulnar nerve in the mid forearm very easily once you uh, learn to see these things with scans and pop a bit of local around the ulnar nerve. These neck of fifth um, metacarpal fractures very satisfying to do. Put the scan on to make sure it's straight afterwards and put it in a plaster. If, with this sort of thing, of course you may not have plaster in your, in your general practice, um, but with this sort of thing, if you see oh, it's just a minor sort of a, um, a, an angle there, you just put that in a wrist splint. You don't even need to plaster that. Again, just you know, sort this in your general practice. Yeah, and just because we have a hospital down the road doesn't mean that we need to use it. Um, here's a, you can see a fracture here, sort of a, an oblique fracture in a toe. Toe fractures are very common. Do we need to worry about them? Sometimes we do, um, but with little things like this that you can see on a scan, or you can see the alignment is pretty good. There's a little cortical breach there. We don't actually need to send that person for an x-ray. We can say, look, the joint looks all right. There's no dislocation. We can look at the joint above and below. We can look at the toe, usually from two or three planes, you know, from the side, from the bottom, from the top. We can look at that. We can say it looks pretty good. Look, you don't actually need uh, to go for an x-ray. So just um, 
we're going to have to get into the habit, I think, as secondary services become more congested and we want to take more back um, and do some of this fun stuff. We can just advise people in our offices. And you just take your scan. You have your scan machine there. I have mine turned on the whole time for an unsuspecting patient. If somebody walks in uh, or hobbles in and you don't want to be suddenly thinking, oh, I need to go and find my ultrasound, I need to turn it on, I need to get some gel, I need to set the preset. Just have it turned on, ready, quickly flick to your musculoskeletal setting, put it on, and um, just get used to doing these things. If you do lots and lots of these, do lots of normals, and of course, remember, you can always compare that with the adjacent toe or the same toe on the other side. You know, is that a breach or is that just some funny... Uh, you know, kind of appearance on the scan, you can tell that just by putting it on the next toe and seeing how it looks, or put it on the toe on the other foot. So these little tricks will help us to use uh, musculoskeletal scanning more and more. This one's for your information. This might be one that we might send for an X-ray. But uh, look, here's a normal looking joint here after we've restored the dislocation. See the, the joint is congruent there. You can also see it down here if you like after we've reduced it. This is the dislocation. You've got one bone down here, that's the joint, and then the other bone's up there. So dorsal dislocation. You adjust it, you put the scan on to make sure you've done a good job. You put your splint on, and then you probably do take an x-ray just to make sure you haven't got a fracture in there either before or after your relocation. These are my favourites, you know, the patient that comes in, they've crunched their chest, maybe heavy rugby tackle, or maybe an elderly person's fallen on the edge of an armchair or something. You suspect a rib fracture, you start telling people that, you know, x-rays don't really help in this sort of thing, but um, they're, they're uncertain, they're a bit short of breath, and they're keen for some imaging. So you put the scan on, and you can see these disruptions, you can see a rib there, and then the rest of it there, sometimes very subtle. You'll never see these with an x-ray, but you'll see them easily with a scan once you get the hang of it. Practice looking at ribs, following the lines of ribs, getting used to where the bones start and the cartilage stops and vice versa. And these are so satisfying. You can say, look, there's your fracture. You validate their pain. You give them some idea about how long they might need to be off work, given that it's a fracture rather than a bruise. And... Um, you haven't really taken much extra time from your exam. You've had your scan ready. You've, you've been feeling around their ribs and, and you just feel around, you find the sore spot and then just put the scan right on the skin. There's the skin there, subcutaneous tissue, little muscle layer. Put it right on the skin, right on top of where they say it's sore. Or give the scan probe to the patient, say just put that on. Kids love doing that. Put that right where it hurts and they'll put it on the fracture for you or the bruise if you like it might not be a fracture so so many rib fractures and these, these come in every now and then don't they and sometimes you get a run of them and you just say if you look this the there's the fracture there you follow the rib down you see the disruption follow it down that's when it turns to cartilage cartilage is very fluid so it looks dark you can't really see see much in sort of hypoechogenic, if you like. Ribs and bones, very echogenic. You can't see into bones, so this is just reflections underneath. There's a few more. There's the, there's the fracture there of the rib. You can measure it if you want. Just put your calipers on. You can say how much of a fracture there is. There's another one there. Another picture. Oh, actually, they look the same, don't they? Then you might want to, well, what about the lung? Remember, um, ultrasound is more sensitive by far than an x-ray for finding both rib fractures and a pneumothorax. So you can have a look. Um, there's your, uh, there's a, a rib, there's a rib, there's the muscle in between, your intercostal muscle, and there's a line of um, pleura. And it's easier to look if that was a sort of a dynamic picture. I don't think that is. Um, yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah. So you look for the sort of crawling ants sign. You look to see that there's uh, that the lung is intact up against the pleural space in the pleural space there, and you can reassure someone: lungs okay, ribs okay, or maybe it has a crack, and 
manage them from there. You don't have to send them for an x-ray, you don't have to send them for, uh, for hospital. Then you have the person come in with a uh, injury to their finger. This is the this is the skin here, this bright layer. This is gel. You sometimes do the standoff technique with painful areas. You're looking with a scan. You put a lot of gel on, so you don't even need to touch the skin, and it gives you a really clear view of that window of gel. And there's a bone down there. This sort of uh, kind of a joint. People, persons worried they got some metal or something stuck in their finger. Very hard to find. You'll know. Everyone will know this. Everyone will relate to how difficult it is to get foreign bodies out of limbs. Sometimes, sometimes they pop out like magic. Other times, you're not really sure if there's something there. The patient's convinced. You don't really know whether to make a big hole or not. Um, so your scan. Yeah, it's part of your normal examination. So you're just going to have your scan ready while you're feeling around, just pop the scan on as well. These are point of care scans. These take a matter of seconds. These are not scans that we're used to seeing when we send people for their antenatal checks. It takes 40 minutes to run through the entire sort of fetal anatomy. These are just bang, straight on. Yes, there's a foreign body. No, there's not. You can say, yes, there is. And then that gives you the confidence to put in a bit of local or do a ring block um, and have a little uh, little tourniquet and just whip that thing out. And there's uh, some really fun techniques for getting out uh, foreign bodies using a scan, sort of marking up the area and, and going straight down to them. So it's not all about the bones, it's about uh, joints, it's about um, muscles and tissues, you can see tears of muscles, you can see hematomas, you can see abscesses. This great big black thing here, you know, we're looking at a knee joint actually, or you know, the suprapatellar pouch. Remember we look for effusions clinically, sometimes hard to find, like in a big person or if the effusion's not very big. But put the scan on, you'll see the smallest of effusions quite easily. This is a pretty decent one. Um, patients love to see this too. You know, people love to the idea that you're actually looking inside them, making a diagnosis. There's all sorts of things you might check around the knee in this area. You can check the collateral ligaments. You can check for fractures of the patella. Just run the scan over, and you'll see these effusions. Sometimes you even want to, you know, pop a needle in them and drain a tense hemarthrosis, or maybe you want to get some some fluid out. Is it a, is it gout or not? Send it away for crystals. So, um, and then we might be able to get this, can we get this running? There we go. So you can even compress it, you know, as you examining, you compress it. You can get a sense of how big it is. Um, effusions in all areas, effusions in the elbow, that suggests the fracture, very easy to see. You can look at effusions around the ankle, around the shoulder, all kinds of joints. You can look for these sort of effusions. Ultrasound are great at looking at cysts, you know, ganglions, you can diagnose, um, you can look at lipomas, you can look at so many things that sort of lumps and bumps that come into your general practice. And you'll also see, you know, tendons. Tendons are fun to look at. You know, you can see if they've been injured, you know, somebody cuts themselves, cuts their flexor surface of their hand, you can actually look at the tendons. Here's the biggest tendon, here's the Achilles, the, the calcaneus would be down here somewhere on the right. And you can see the sort of paintbrush appearance, you know, someone's taken a paintbrush and just, that's the Achilles tendon. Got the skin, a little bit of subcutaneous tissue, very close to the surface in the fat pad and more things down there. But this is easy to look at and see how it's this big bulging thing here. So this person hasn't ruptured their Achilles, which is easy to see on a scan. But this person doesn't have a normal one. It should be about the same sort of width all the way along. But see this big bulge? So this person has a tendinosis, which is a very common thing. And um, it's fun and easy to look at on a scan. So thanks for watching. You know, we better wrap it up there. Get yourself, uh, get yourself a scanner for your practice. You get a pretty, uh, pretty cheap one you can share between you guys. Uh, learn some skills each so you can uh, refer to each other. One person DVTs, one person fractures, one person pregnancies. And start doing some courses, get some uh, musculoskeletal training, 
watch plenty of YouTube. It's just a simple YouTube channel I've got there. Plenty of good stuff uh, out there. And get into it.